presented uh, three witnesses, three uh, young native uh, guys, who later recanted their testimony that they were intimidated by the FBI. One of them, if you see the movie In Incident Out of Ola, uh, yeah. Norman Brown, he talks about uh, why he testified and that uh, he was forced to lie against Leonard. So it got to the point where, through the appeals process, we disproved everything that the government had presented against Leonard. There was nothing left, but they still wouldn't give him a new trial because the judge gets up and says, uh, the only way Leonard can get a new trial is if you can prove beyond a shadow of doubt that the jury would have found a different verdict. Well, you can't prove that. We could prove that Leonard was in China at that time, and that wouldn't prove that the jury would have found a different verdict. What it meant was is that the jury would have had all the evidence and wouldn't have had the lying evidence. Yeah. But where other people, gangsters and whatnot, politicians, get new trials easily if you show any type of, of problem in the trial with Leonard, he. So it got to the point where the United States government attorney, his name was Lynn Crooks, <laughs> really, that's his name, came out and said, we do not know what role Leonard may have had on the day of the shootout. Other court rulings, another one a couple years later, came out and said, a minute that the government intimidated witness, fabricated evidence, but they still could not rule in Leonard's favor. So that's what we got from the court. Their laws, their constitution, that whole door was slammed shut on us. So we struggled in other means. We tried to get congressional hearings, but the pressure from the other side was too great. They wanted to keep it all invisible. We finally had a parole hearing. Leonard goes to this parole hearing, presents his side, the other side presents his side, and the parole officer recommends that Leonard be paroled. The parole commission comes in, overrules that parole officer, and fires him. Then we're left with clemency. At the, the last time we tried to do clemency, uh, Carter, I mean not Carter, Clinton was president. Yeah. And we believe that we came close. We came so close that the FBI got worried. The first time in the history of the FBI, they had a rally in front of the White House of 500 FBI agents that supposedly were sick that day. Uh, against Leonard. They pressured newspapers to write editorials against Leonard and whatnot. We, we have the evidence of all that. So Clinton decided not to rule either way. Well, now we're in a new clemency campaign with uh, President Obama. We've known for a long time that if Obama was to grant clemency, that it would be after the election and before uh, inauguration, whoever was going to be inaugurated. It's him this time again. And that was our opportunity, our window of possibility. So for the last year and a half, we have been working as hard as we can to create public awareness for Leonard so that people can add their voice to the pressure to President Obama to grant clemency for Leonard Peltier. Now we ask you, we plead you to please help us with this. Help Leonard because of the type of man he is. For 36 years, he's been in prison <coughs> and he has stood strong, not just for himself, not just for his people, but for the human rights of all people. There are a lot of things that you all don't know about Leonard. Do you know that every year he does a Christmas drive for toys for yeah. children on, on uh, Pine Ridge? Mm -hmm. That doesn't get in the newspapers. And he does many things like that. Anytime that there's a, another struggle happening, 
Leonard is in there adding his voice. When it looked like a Momia bull, Jamal was, might get executed, he asked all his supporters to stop working on his case for a while and fight for Momia. That's the kind of person Leonard is. And Sue, who will be speaking soon, will tell you about Leonard in the old days. Leonard has always been that, like that. If you were in need, he, he had an auto shop. If, if, if an Ellers car broke down, Leonard would be out there fixing it. Uh, that's Leonard Peltier. So please recognize this man for, for who he has been and how strong. And he's been in terrible conditions in prison. Uh -huh. Solitary confinement, many times for nothing. The last time some woman mailed him in a, a big silver coin and they, they got it through the male censorship and threw him in solidarity for 72 uh, uh, days for something that somebody mailed into him. Any excuse. They tried to assassinate him while he was in prison. He's been under these conditions. They've denied him medical uh, treatment. We had to go through a long struggle to finally get him to be seen at the Mayo Clinic to finally get his jaw taken care of. And it took a long struggle just to get that. But Leonard has stood strong for all this. Also, please, I appeal to you to support Leonard because he's an activist. Every one of us that does anything to advance the social struggle for something better for our people, the person next to us, or for ourselves, could be a Leonard Peltier. If we are standing in the place that uh, the other side wants us to be away from, or we're standing in their way, or we're putting a spotlight on something they are doing, we are in danger of what happened to Leonard Peltier. Because Leonard Peltier showed how far they are willing to go to suppress an act of it throughout the law, throughout the Constitution. <coughs> I appeal to you, I plead to you to support Leonard Peltier because the struggle of the original people and what happened in this land did not end 100 years ago. It started over 500 years ago, but it didn't end then. We had the termination policies. And, and the boarding schools, and, and, and it continues. And one thing you know for sure, if you need any measurement of it continuing, ask if Leonard Peltier is still in prison. For as long as Leonard is in prison, you know, even if you do not uh, are aware of all the things going around this country, you know for a fact that it has not changed as long as they hold him. I, I appeal to you, plead to you, to support Leonard Peltier because you need to do this for yourselves. Every one of you that tries to make a better world is connected to Leonard Peltier. He's your brother. He's in there for you. And we need to all be out there, out here for him. And lastly, I ask you to do this for the children. When you go home tonight, if you have children, or if you don't, you just see children, look into their eyes and ask them, what kind of world do you want to give them? Because it is our generation that gives the world to the next generation. It is our responsibility to try to give them a world that's worth living in, a world of justice and peace. And we can't do that if we sit back and say, well, I like Leonard, but I, I really need to watch some football game or baseball game. I don't have time to write a letter or whatnot for Leonard. Look into the eyes of your children and ask yourself, what time do you have for a better world for them? 
and you understand why all of us have to do everything we possibly can. For Leonard, uh, we have a person back there, Adam from uh, Portland, is going to be passing out the half sheets of paper. Starting next week, we're going to be doing a Northwest, uh, excuse me for a second, Northwest video and email zap. A zap is when a bunch of people email or call at the same time. We're going to be calling from the Northwest to the White House for a week. Continue after that, continue before that, but we want to make a strong statement to President Obama that people in the Pacific Northwest support Leonard Peltier. Take these and send them to your uh, friends, to your group, to your organization. Keep sending it. I know writing a letter or making a phone call is not very glamorous. We'd rather be on the barricades or something else. But this is what needs to be done now. And the mark of an organizer or an activist or a warrior or any such person for the people is doing what needs to be done at any given time, even if it's not that desirable. Please get these out. Uh, on Facebook, you'll see that now there is a Facebook uh, site up. Uh, just type in these, these, uh, uh, the name of this and you'll, you'll come up with it. Please not only uh, click that you're going to join the, the, the Zap, but invite all your friends. Share it. Do everything we can. I, it, I would rather be marching in the street. Most of the time, we can march in the street. But right now, we have to do this. This, we are told that we have from now to the inauguration to get as much into uh, President Obama. And right now, it's embarrassing. Right now, we are being beat out by Twinkies. Yeah. There's a bunch of people that want to nationalize Twinkies. And their petition to uh, Obama got more people than Leonard did. We have a long ways to go to change our society into what it is. And I especially want to thank the, the local group, uh, Peace, Justice, and Healing, because that in a lot of ways says it all. We're working for peace that we haven't had for 500 years. We're working for justice, and that's what Leonard Peltier is about. And we cannot heal as long as people like Leonard and whatnot are being oppressed and kept in a cage, as long as the Constitution is, is ripped out. So I, I plead with you, with everything that I got, and I ain't got too much left. I, I just recently got out of the hospital, so I'm not speaking as good as I used to. Please help us. If you've ever helped anything before, this is the time when we have a chance to free Leonard. Please help us. Thank you very much for the well-being of all.